Right, we're going to continue with Roxy, Roxy Milan, and her topic is the introduction of health and safety preliminaries in the Eastern Cape Province. Roxy. Thank you very much, Dr. Crawford. My topic is the introduction of health and safety preliminaries in the Eastern Cape Province. Let's consider how much these items cost. A full-time on-site health and safety officer. Now, the average salary for a full-time on-site health and safety officer is 15,000 Rand per month. PPE. The outfit that this guy's wearing over here costs around 758 Rand. Now, that excludes when they lose their hot ads. Medicals. Projects on Kucha. The medicals for these projects that workers need to go undergo an entrance as well as an exit medicals. Medical. And these medicals cost 690 Rand. Now, you may think the cost of prevention is a lot. But consider the cost of accidents. How much do you think this accident costs? The mall collapse in Durban. Two fatalities and 29 people injured. How about this recent accident? The bridge collapse in Santon. Two fatalities and 20 people injured. The global construction industry has one fatal accident every 10 minutes. And in the building and construction sector in South Africa from the period of 2007 to 2008, there were 578 accidents reported, 162 of these being fatalities. The South African construction industry performs poorly with regard to health and safety, if you compare to other industries in the country. The focus of my study is the introduction of health and safety preliminaries on building projects within the Eastern Cape, and to determine the extent of lack of financial provision made by contractors. Although limited research has been conducted on this topic, my research will aim to investigate the value of introducing health and safety preliminaries in order to assist contractors. The objectives of my study is to inform the design team of the need to include a measurable instrument within bills of quantities for health and safety and to introduce the concept of health and safety preliminaries to address the non-facilitation of equitable pricing of health and safety. Now, there's three main legislations governing health and safety in South Africa. These are the Construction Regulations of 2014, the Occupational Health and Safety Act, as well as the Compensation for Occupational Injuries and Disease Act. Unfortunately, unfortunately due to time constraints of this presentation, I can't go into too much detail. I've identified four forms of contracts in South Africa, the JBCC, the GCC, the FIDIC and the NEC. Now, the FIDIC and NEC are of overseas origin and therefore provide conflicting clauses with regard to health and safety. The GCC talks about reporting of accidents. And the most widely used form of contract in South Africa, the JBCC, doesn't make any explicit reference to health and safety other than parties complying with legislation. It is evident that there's a missing link between contract documentation and the legislation governing, South Africa in, governing health and safety in South Africa. And this missing link needs to be eliminated. If we look at forms of financial provision made for health and safety, we see that the ASAQS provides this model description to its members. The members use this in bill preparation and it's included in the preliminaries bill. Now all this description says is that the contractor must comply with health and safety legislation as well as the health and safety specification which should be attached at the back of the tender documents. The contractor prices this as a lump sum figure. Which brings me to my main point. How does the client ensure that the contract is made adequate financial provision for health and safety, merely based on a lump sum figure provided? My study was a mixed methodology study. It was a partially mixed sequential dominant status design. All this meant is that I initially carried out a qualitative study, after which it was followed by a quantitative study, with the quantitative study having more of an emphasis on my study. My population was registered quantity surveys in the Eastern Cape, as well as construction companies in the Eastern Cape. My initial qualitative study, I formed an interview protocol, which consisted of open-ended interview, interview questions. After which, my findings that I received from my qualitative study, I took carried on to my quantitative study, and I developed a questionnaire survey with a Likert scale. My sample for my qualitative study was four quantity surveyors identified on the ASAQS Eastern Cape chapter list as having the necessary skills and expertise in order to facilitate my study. I then interviewed five construction firms 
on the ECMBA list, as well as one representative from the ASAQ's Eastern Cape chapter and one representative from the ECMBA. I then carried out a quantitative study, of which a questionnaire was, served, was forwarded in an email to all the ASAQS Eastern Cape chapter list quantity surveyors, and that same questionnaire was sent to contractors on the ECMBA list. For the quantity surveyors population, I had a response rate of 15.6%, and for my contractors' response rates, I had a response rate of 24.1%. Okay, so initial question in my qualitative study was what percentage of health and safety constitutes project cost? Now, quantity surveys, three out of the four quantity surveys gave me a percentage from 2 to 5%. They based this on historical costs, with one quantity survey saying they have absolutely no idea. Contractors varied from 0.5% all the way up to 8%, which maybe identifies it varies from project to project. It is project specific. I then had a question if, if they, in my qualitative study, if they agree with the introduction of health and safety preliminaries, of which four out of the, eight, four out of the five contractors agreed, which was 80%, and three out of the four quantity surveys agreed to the introduction of health and safety preliminaries, 75%. I posed the same question at the ASAQS representative, as well as the ECMBA representative, and both these associations agreed. I had the same question in my quantitative study, and I gave them a scale of, one, a scale of agreement from one to five, one being strongly disagree, and five being, one being strongly disagree, and five being strongly agree, and mean scores were calculated. Now for quantity surveys, they had a mean score of 3.75, and if I interpret that, it falls in the category of agree. Contractors had a mean score of 4.43, which falls in the category of strongly agree. Now, based on items that I collected in my qualitative design, I designed a questionnaire in my quantitative with, with items that would be of relevance to a health and safety preliminaries document. I asked respondents to rank this from a score on a scale of importance from 1 to 7, 1 being not at all important, 5, 7 being extremely important. I then evaluated it using this table. If we looked at, look at the top ranked items between each population, we see QSs rank the top item as first aid with a mean score of 6.44. Their second item, PPE, health and safety plan, hoarding, and their fifth ranked item, storage to flammable goods. If we compare this to contractors, their first ranked item was suspended scaffolding with a mean score of 6.77. Then special scaffolding, scaffolding access, and storage to flammable goods. The only similarity in the top five being storage to flammable goods. If we interpret this, we can see that quantity surveyors, their top ranked item falls in the category of extremely important and contractors like also, their top ranked item extremely important. Now all of these five top ranked items for each population all fall in this category. I then looked at the lowest ranked items and QS is ranked in their lowest five items, general administration, mess room, environmental measurement, biological monitoring and living accommodation. Bottom ranked item living accommodation with a mean score of 4.22. Quantity surveys, I mean contractors, their bottom five ranked items were meeting, showers, living accommodation, environmental measurements, and biological mon monitoring with a mean score of 5.08. The bottom three items being similar. If we interpret this, we can see that the fifth ranked, fifth bottom ranked item by quantity surveys fell in the category of moderately, moderately important and contractors, very important. Now we want to see where the change is, where, where it goes from moderately important to neutral. And this ha happens in quantity surveys at the second last item. Now if we compare that to contractors, at this item they also had moderately important. The bottom ranked item for QSs, the lowest ranked, was neutral. And contractors, moderately important. Which shows that all the items posed to them in the questionnaire Nothing was ranked um, not important at all or of low importance, with the lowest ranked item still falling in the category of neutral. I then carried out a Mann-Whitney-U test. Now this test is the statistical difference between the two, popu two populations in their responses. And if the p-value is less than 0.05, it means there is a statistical difference. Now there are a few items where there was a statistical difference between the two populations. And these were housekeeping, access, special scaffolding, 
suspended scaffolding and medicals, as well as transport of workers, full-time health and safety officer, mess room and scaffolding. Now I then took these items that had a statistical difference and I went to go and look at which, based on their mean scores, where the biggest difference was. And I found the biggest difference in mean score was between housekeeping, where quantity surveyors ranked that it fell in the category of moderately important and contractors extremely important. I then took all the statistical difference items and I saw which one had the smallest statistical difference. And this was scaffolding, where cursors ranked as very important and contractors extremely important. Again, what I found was there was nothing where quantity surveyors, there was a difference where quantity surveyors ranked it of low importance and contractors high importance. General comments I got regarding health and safety was the introduction of health and safety preliminaries will level the playing field. The ASAQS should consider separate trade for health and safety and include it in the standard system of measuring building work. Health and safety would be beneficial for cost control as a QS. Now the ASAQS acknowledged that change is necessary in order to facilitate clients and contractor health and safety related actions. But they do not facilitate detailed or scientific financial provision for health and safety and they have made little change to guidelines or information with respect to the updated construction regulations of 2014. The ECMBA alerts and provide members regarding changes to legislation. They present health and safety workshops for members. They also conduct health and safety audits on building projects, free of charge to their members. They market the MBSA Health and Safety Manual and they arrange the regional MBSA Health and Safety competition amongst their contractors. Although health and safety is seen as an important aspect to contractors and QSs alike, bills of quantities and contract documentation does not facilitate financial provision for health and safety. When we consider the importance of items to be included in health and safety preliminaries, well, all the respondents either neutral or above, but it's almost like a seesaw of how, to the extent, what extent are items important between the quantities there and the contractor. My recommendations would be health and safety preliminaries should be included in bills of quantities and they should be based on project specific health and safety specifications. A construction health and safety agent should be appointed at stage three, the design development stage, at the latest during a project. The benefits of introducing a health and safety preliminaries would be that it assists in evaluating competitive tendering, it assists quantity surveys in terms of cost control, and it assists the quantity surveys to determine the cost of prevention. The longer we wait, the more people are at risk. And the only way forward that I can see with regard to this topic is the introduction of health and safety preliminaries. Great, Kathy. Um, very interesting, and certainly um, there is a need for something like that in the industry. Um, but I don't think that necessarily the response to what convert that into a question. Does the, the response, in your view, the responsibility of the production of that standard prelims document solely lie with the ASAQS? No, but I think members of the ASAQS, uh, as well as the SAC QSP, have have an impact on making that making that decision or pushing for that. If they if if the ASAQS can see that its members are wanting such a document, they can take that further, and they almost the the voice of, of quantity surveyors, especially in the Eastern Cape, if you're a member of the ASAQS and you have a problem, don't you take that problem to the ASAQS? So they can al almost speak for quantity surveyors that belong to them. That, that's my... Maybe I didn't phrase it correctly. Because your research basically... I mean, to be quite frank, I think the, the, your responses from the ECMBA in terms of what are the important aspects of h &S coming from the contracting fraternity yep. is probably of greater value. Yep. Um, and your research has basically shown that, that there's a big mismatch there. So surely the production of something like a standard document should be a collaborative effort rather than just speculative? Yep. Um, that's why I have I have spoken to Prof Moritz from the, he's sitting on the JBCC technical committee and he has taken my presentation there. So I suppose, um, during my research, I only had access to, 
to interview an ASAQS Eastern Cape chapter representative, but it would it probably would be beneficial to rather go at something like the JBCC where they have representation from each population. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rafia. Just put out my comment we just to see the uh, new standard system in the seventh edition. And um, I can say that perhaps maybe in the near future we will receive the eighth edition with the um, preliminaries, for health and safety. It's top of the agenda. I don't know where the meeting that was held uh, last week, specifically with JBCC, as well as the ASA Kiwis, to include. Um, Women's in general health and safety. Perhaps maybe as part of a goal number one. Yeah. Thank you very much. Professor Ru? No, I don't have any questions. Thank you. I congratulate you on an excellent report. Thank you very much. Uh, open up to the audience. Any questions? I answered all the questions. Very good. Yeah. Wait. Huh? There we go. In your opinion, who do you think would be responsible for? doing the measuring of that section and so it becomes a bull number one? Um, well, as I suggested, that they should include a health and safety agent from the beginning of the you know, initiation stage of the project. Maybe the health and safety agent can sit together with the quantity surveyor. I think it's if we can measure off, off drawings and, and specs in general, why can't we measure off the health and safety spec that's provided by the clients? <laughs> Yeah. But to support yeah. you, Roxy, we have a, we have a very thorough knowledge of the specification in the first place. Yeah. So looking at a health and safety specification is your first base, as it were, that goes with everything, all the other information with regard to a project from the from the inception stage, as you say. So I think that we would be guided by having had the consultation with the health and safety consultant and what we know and how method, materials and methods are applied via the, specific, the general space and then through the health and safety specification itself and naturally through an assessment of the drawing. The time of the year that the project's going ahead and the climatic conditions that ran at that time and the added danger that occurs with them. So I think we have a very good overview provided we get that information from, from the other consultants. So building information modeling is a big point here and the information that goes with it. Trevor and then Jake. I just have a little problem with the perhaps the confusion of um, quanti the quantitative sum. Uh, when you speak of preliminaries, the standard preliminaries as the standard amount are not quantitative as far as producing quantities. And if we're speaking about a preliminary, uh, uh, health and safety preliminaries, we're also at the same time speaking about putting quantities in them. Now, that to me would be a, uh, um, a challenge, you know, that, uh, that, uh, that isn't there at the moment. Whereas, if we're looking at quantitative um, um, numbers coming into it, then we should be looking at the health and safety uh, training as such a not a, not a, a, a preliminary, uh, because my, uh, I, I'm fairly neutral on the, on the thing as a, as a total, but I I have a problem with the quantitative sum, you know, as far as the measurement. Can I make, sorry, can I make a comment to that? Um, my, my idea was that at least itemizing the items, you know, so when a quantity survey gets a tender document back, he can see what the contractor has allowed for, not necessarily quantifying it, but just itemizing it where it's either fixed, it's either time-related time, time related or fixed, and something like a health and safety officer would be time-related, you know the duration of the, of the contract, that can be put as a time-related item, whereas a fixed item could be the consumable, such as the hard hats, where a contractor can allow for it, it's, it's his choice to allow for it, so... That's yeah, just my that's comment. The, 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 the aim of it, then I, I can agree more with that. that when okay. we start coming to trying to uh, quantify how many hard ads and how, uh, uh, even though they're provisional, uh, it just leads to problems down the line. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, just a comment in relation to what Professor Rue suggested. I think that quantity surveyors would be capable, but then the quantity surveyors might be opening themselves to um, legal implications, you know, professional indemnity that it could be a risk of quantity surveyors if we were to start property. May I respond to that? You, you may. We will not justify the designers in terms of the, of the regulations anyway through our, our, our action and in, or in action with, through the specification. So we can't get away from it that we are the, the, the term designer lists who the designers are and we are right there. But as Trevor says, far better to list the items and, and the advocacy sense, yeah, the, the, the pricing option is then over to the tender. If, uh, if, uh, Mr. Chair, I'm not allowed to comment. There was some comment that the supervisors are not allowed. Supervisors is not allowed to ask questions. But Sorry. you can have a brief comment. However palatable or not palatable it is, the construction regulations are specific. The client must ensure the principal contractor has made adequate allowance for health and safety. I do not understand what people do not understand with respect to that sub-regulation. But if you think a lump sum enables the client to ensure that they have made adequate allowance for h and then I don't only need to see a, a psychologist or, or a psychiatrist, because you cannot do so with a lump sum. It's that simple. Then why don't you lump sum the brickwork and lump sum the concrete and lump sum everything? And we all know what happens with lump sums. After the 2010 World Cup stage, where lump sums led the industry, the contractors had an absolute party. In fact, they're still partying on the money. They just gave some of it back. So, so just be careful of lump sums. Thank you. Right. Thank Not you. a question, uh, Professor Graham, it's a comment. Thank you very much, Roxy. Thank you.